Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Market Forecast, brought to you by Options University. This is Butch Shorak. It's Monday, January 27th, 2014. Access to this video is for educational and informational purposes only. Nothing contained in this video, website, or promotional material constitutes a promotion, recommendation, solicitation, or offer of any particular investment, security, or transaction. Options University provides educational services that are meant to teach you the risks and rewards of trading stocks and options. We're not a service that tells you what to trade. We're not implying or guaranteeing any profit, and as always, do not trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. Looking at last week, we had a week of disaster as we finally saw that market pullback looking at the Dow the Nasdaq the S&P 500 Russell 2000 in that order we see for our change we see a lot of negative numbers there looking at the percentage change in the Dow down three and a half percent Nasdaq 1.7 percent down S&P 500 down 2.6 percent Russell 2000 down 2 percent 2.1 percent as we saw the deluge continue looking at the year to date which is basically the month to date we look at the Dow down 4%, NASDAQ down 1.2%, S&P 500 down 3%, and 1.7, down 1.7 out of the Russell 2000. As we see, the market finally have that pullback that we've been expected as we saw many of our top stocks start to provide a little softness in the market, and that's exactly what we got was a bit of softness. Now, all this in spite of the fact that the earning reports are coming through pretty solid. Netflix certainly came in strong. Uh, and IBM uh, came in strong, but this wasn't a week that we were focused on earnings reports. So we'll continue with our earnings reports, but it's probably not where we're going to focus. Uh, looking at the uh, coming week, we see that uh, we've got a deluge of uh, economic announcements starting with uh, Monday morning. Uh, we got new home sales at 10 a.m. and expected to be a bit soft. Dallas Fed taking place at 10:30. Going to Tuesday, we see we have a durable goods order before the market opens at 8:30. Case Shiller coming in at 9 o'clock, and then uh, 10 uh, consumer confidence, and uh, that'll take us through Tuesday. Looking at Wednesday, <laughs> the all-important FOMC meeting announcement takes place at 2 o'clock, starting Tuesday morning. At uh, uh, the meeting begins, so uh, we've got a Fed meeting coming in. Expectations are that they were going to find that there's going to be a, uh, a, a slowdown in the buying of bonds, and that is well expected. Let's take a look at Thursday. We see GDP for the month of uh, December coming out, and we see jobless claims, uh, which comes out weekly, coming out at day 30, and pending home sales index coming out at uh, 10 a.m., which probably will be a little uh, soft. Then finally, on Friday, to end out the month of January, uh, which uh, many can considered to be a key month as to where the market's going for the coming year. We see personal income and outlays coming in at 8.30. Uh, employment cost index coming out at uh, 8.30, telling us exactly what happened during the month of December. Chicago PMI at 9.45 and consumer sentiment uh, as we approach that 10 o'clock uh, line. So it's a week that's loaded with economic announcements. Last week had basically no economic reports whatsoever, and it was the international concerns of China that uh, brought the market uh, to its knees giving us uh, one of the worst weeks that we've had in, uh, you know, quite some time. So let's take a look and see what that uh, uh, sell-off looked like. Looking at uh, the uh, uh, month or the uh, long-term uh, three-month uh, chart on the S&P, we see that we're, we're uh, in an uptrend, but look at what happened. We broke that all-important 50-day moving average, and don't be surprised if we end up down at that 200-day moving average. As This is the time of the year when we get that, we could get that pullback to set up the rest of the years. We're still in a, in a uptrend, and when will we buy this bottom? How do you pick this bottom? Well, that's something that your technical analysis uh, will be able to provide for you. As we see the futures uh, this morning uh, showing a little strength, but Europe uh, and uh, and Asia showing us weakness as they opened, uh, and so uh, uh, we'll, we get kind of a mixed message this morning, and uh, we could expect maybe we might even see a bit more of a downtrend with maybe a bounce and a lower high, and then uh, see if we get back down to that 200-day moving average. Um, we're still uh, no big changes. The Fed's not uh, 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 abandoning the uh, market, and uh, uh, what has happened is that the dollar is showing a little bit of strength as we move forward and we'll see how some of our other sectors did during the week 
where we showed our big pullback. Let's take a look at the week a little more closely, looking at the S&P on our uh, so one-month chart. And we see, look at that. Uh, here's our five days, which takes place from there over. And we see that we were showing good strength, headed towards the previous high. And uh, then we kind of stalled out there, went sideways on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, slightly higher on Tuesday, slightly higher on Wednesday, and then we got the beginning of the sell-off on uh, uh, Thursday as we hit that 30-day moving average, and then Friday, boom, down it goes as all the talk about China comes through and uh, the U.S. dollar reaction to that. And so that uh, shows us that they're, uh, they're, we're having that pullback that could set up uh, the rest of the year. Uh, looking at the S&P, we see this uh, huge sell-off on Friday. Uh, futures are looking a little uh, bit for a bounce this morning, but that's a long candlestick to make up for in one day. We'll see whether we're re yet ready to see this market turn around and head back up. Are we still in an uptrend? Well, we're still in an uptrend, but we're showing a little bit of weakness. Has it pulled back to that uh, uh uh, um, 1700 before where it pulls back to that uh, moving average. Well, let's take a look in the last 30 days. We'll go back and look at that, and we see it hasn't been there in the last uh, uh, three months either. So, but it, it, it has done that to us before, and we'll continue to do it. This is what markets do as we look for higher highs and higher lows for those of you that are bullish out there. SPX. We had quite a disastrous week, and let's take a look at some of the other indexes and see what they did uh, during this pullback. Would we expect basically the same kind of movement? Well, let's take a look at the Dow, which showed a little more weakness. It didn't get near, uh, it didn't get as high as far as talking about getting up to that previous high, and sold off also headed for that 200-day uh, moving average sitting down there, which is one of those mainstays to see if we continue in this uh, uh, long-term uh, uptrend that we're seeing. Looking at the NASDAQ, which had been uh, leading us somewhat higher, we see that as we looked at the last week, we uh, certainly got new highs out of the NASDAQ, approaching that 4250 level, and then we had Thursday and Friday, NASDAQ sitting at that 30-day moving average, and uh, as it looks a little bit stronger than what we saw out of the Dow and out of the uh, S&P 500. And finally, uh, looking at that small uh, 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 Russell 2000, this uh, small stock uh, index, Let's take a look at that and see what that did. And we see that it also had uh, all new highs. It didn't give us that early indication that many times uh, uh, the Russell will give us about a pullback. And uh, it, too, uh, broke that 30-day moving average uh, heading uh, lower. Uh, remember, uh, Russell many times leads us in that first uh, month of the uh, new year as we see the shift take place uh, to this uh these uh, smaller uh, stocks in the uh, Russell 2000. Well, with a move like this out of the market, of course, uh, is there a little fear that comes out of the market? You bet. Well, for those of you that have been trading the VIX, look at that pop up, up to 18. Uh, how high can that go? Well, we can see it go up to around the 20s, and don't be surprised if it does, as we see that huge move in one day, um, and uh, certainly more volatility in the market. For those of you that are faint of heart, uh, you're going to expect more uh, uh, volatility out of the market in the coming weeks. So uh, maybe for those of you that are, are a little squeamish, uh, might be a time to just kind of hold tight and wait till the market settles down. For those of you that are, uh, are capable of riding these things out, you're looking for that bottom, trying to determine when to get back into the market to the bullish side. Meanwhile, there certainly seems to be more room to the downside. Looking at bonds, what did bonds do? Well, there we are, shot right up. We've been in the high, we got reached a high for the uh, for the three months and broke through that previous high uh, that we had uh, during this past three months is the bond market uh, had a crossover uh, showing us that there has uh, been some strength uh, coming into bonds and uh, other safe havens that we uh, have with our market. Looking at TLT, we see that the bonds are at a real high for the last three months. Now let's take a look at another one of our ETFs to give us an idea of where the sectors are going. What did they do? Well, gold gave us a new high. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, popping through some of this resistance as that safe haven of gold uh, showed a little strength as the market pulled back. But notice, we're not at new highs for gold. We're not even close to that. 
And so uh, how much fear really is in the market and are they really running for safety? Well, there's a rotation that takes place, but uh, uh, no big move out of gold as uh, we see it moved up for the week and did have a bit of a breakout. And that was to be expected with this pullback in stocks. Uh, earnings reports for the coming week. Well, certainly we have uh, 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 interesting stocks to look at this week as there wasn't a whole lot going on last week as we main concerns we had were uh, reports of uh, gains from IBM and Netflix. Looking at this week, we've got Apple. We've got Facebook, we've got Ford, we've got AT&T, we've got Qualcomm. But it's questionable whether uh, it's going to be earnings reports that are going to move this market. Uh, the concern right now seems to be focused on the uh, foreign uh, exchanges and the foreign companies, mainly China. Uh, looking at the kind of volume, what kind of volume did we have on Friday? Well, we had higher volume than that in the last three months, but it certainly is very close to the previous high as we see what sell-offs do and that is um, a big volume on the sell-off is there was this uh, move away from stocks as the fear of the uh, uh, international concerns came through. Uh, looking next at the financials, so we expect a pullback there. We are well below the 50-day moving average following the overall market, and that's what exactly what we expect, giving us a, a bit of a move lower than we've seen out of the financials as we see this uh, market pullback, which is probably healthy for the overall markets, as it now gives it room to head back up towards some of those previous highs. Exactly where is that low and uh, what will take place? Well, remember, we got a lot of economic announcements this week and the Fed of course could play a big heavy role in this but I personal feeling understand that is a personal feeling Fed isn't going to give us any big news to change uh, uh, the overall market it's just a healthy pullback looking at oil we see that oil has increased for the last two weeks as we see a bit of a rise out of oil as uh, uh, we we uh, see the market pull back, but not anywhere near the highs for the past three months as we had a double top back there and there. Uh, will we reach that same level? Don't be surprised if we end up with a triple top up here, oil approaching those levels as we uh, continue on this uh, a bit of a pullback. And remember, futures are up a bit this morning, um, but uh, there's no big strength taking place in the futures. Uh, but we could expect a bit of a, of a, uh, a little uh, roll up from the uh, uh, disastrous Friday for those of you that are bulls. And then finally, those of you that are uh, uh, gold members, stick around. We'll take a look at our stocks. We're going to look at Apple, where it's uh, sitting prior to its earnings announcement, some of the other stocks that we watch. And uh, we're going to take McDonald's out of our uh, out of our uh, portfolio this week as it's been doing absolutely nothing and for if you'd like to see more free videos from Options University go to www.optionsuniversity.com forward slash free gold and with that thought this is market forecast and we'll take a look at this coming week and this is uh, brought to you by Options University this is Butch Shorak it's Monday January 27 2014 and thank you for being here